In this video, we will consider additional differentiation rules, specifically the product rule, quotient rule, exponential functions, and higher order derivatives. We will use these limit definitions of derivative to justify the derivative rules that we, we have here. The first rule we consider is the product rule. If f and g are two differentiable functions, then the derivative of f times g with respect to x is f prime of x times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. Let's look at how we know that this is the case. Suppose we have two functions, u and v. They're not only differentiable, but for purposes of illustration, we'll say that they're also positive and they increase as x increases. And we're going to let h be greater than zero. Using the limit definition of derivative, we know that the derivative of u times v with respect to x is equal to the limit as h goes to zero of u of x plus h times v of x plus h minus u of x times v of x all over h. We want to show that this equals u prime of x times v of x plus u of x times v prime of x. First of all, let's take a look at the numerator. That u of x times v of x we can consider and represent as the area of a rectangle having dimensions u of x times v of x. The other piece in the numerator, u of x plus h times v of x plus h, can be written or er, can be represented by the area of a rectangle having dimensions u of x plus h and v of x plus h. So when I find the difference, I'm really looking at this light blue region that's shaded here in this diagram. Now this region can be broken into three different pieces. That first piece we see has dimensions delta u by v of x. The second piece has dimensions delta v by u of x. That third piece has dimensions u of delta u by delta v. So that when I consider the limit as h goes to zero of u of x plus h times v of x plus h minus u of x times v of x all over h, I can write that numerator in the three pieces. Delta u times v of x plus u of x times delta v plus delta u times delta v all over h. And we want the limit as h goes to zero. I'm going to uh, express that fraction as the sum of three fractions with the denominator of each fraction being h. And now I can use the limit laws for the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. And I notice that I've got the limit as del of delta u over h as h goes to zero times v of x plus u of x times the limit of delta v over h as h goes to zero plus the limit of as h goes to zero of delta u over h times the limit of delta v as h goes to zero. And I notice that in each of these pieces, this is the derivative of u. Here we've got the derivative of v, and here again we have the derivative of u. So that I can rewrite this expression as u prime of x times v of x plus u of x times v prime of x plus u prime of x times zero because the limit of delta v as h goes to zero is zero. So therefore, we get the product rule. If I have two differentiable functions, f and g, with g of x not equal to zero, then the derivative of the quotient, f over g, is equal to f prime of x times g of x minus f of x times g prime of x divided by the square of the denominator, g of x squared. And we notice that the numerator looks very similar to the product rule with the only difference being the, the addition sign is changed to a subtraction sign. We can also consider the derivative of exponential functions. As an example, let's consider g of t is equal to 10 to the t power. Let's look at the derivative of g with respect to t using the limit definition of a derivative. So the limit as h goes to zero of g of t plus h minus g of t all over h is the limit as h goes to zero of 10 to the t plus h minus 10 to the t all over h. Using my rules of exponents, I can rewrite 10 to the t plus h as, as 10 to the t times 10 to the h. So then I can subtract off the 10 to the t, divide all of that by h, and take the limit as h goes to zero. And I see that I have a common factor of 10 to the t in the numerator. And as I factor that out, 
I see that that 10 to the t does not depend at all on h. So therefore, I can make that a coefficient of my limit. So I've got 10 to the t times the limit as h goes to 0 of 10 to the h minus 1 all over h. I'm going to rewrite that limit expression. I've got 10 to the t times the limit as h goes to 0 of 10 to the 0 plus h minus 10 to the 0 all over h, which I notice, again, is just the limit definition of derivative. I'm evaluating the derivative of 10 to the t specifically when t is equal to 0. So I can say that the derivative of my exponential function, 10 to the t, is simply 10 to the t times g prime evaluated at 0. Now what does this mean? Well, graphically, I can say that at a point t comma 10 to the t on the graph of y equals 10 to the t, the slope of the tangent line to the graph is the y value, which is 10 to the t, times the slope of the tangent line to that same graph at the point 0, 1. And the slope of the tangent line at 0, 1 is simply g prime of 0. Well, what do I mean? Suppose I have the graph of y equals 10 to the t power. And I have the point t 10 to the t. The slope of the tangent line at that point is the y value 10 to the t times the slope of the tangent line at the point should be 0, 1. The slope of this line is g prime of 0. The slope of this line is g prime of 0 times the y value, 10 to the t. And that's g prime of t. So in this case, if I've got g of t is equal to 10 to the t, and I need that g prime of 0, well, what is g prime of 0? Well, I can consider a numerical approach and recall that h is close to 0 and on either side of 0. And then I can calculate the difference quotient, 10 to the h minus 1 all over h. And for these values of h that are close to 0 on either side, as h gets close to 0, 10 to the h minus 1 all over h is very close to 2.3026. So in other words, when I've got the exponential function 10 to the t, the derivative of g with respect to t is g prime evaluated at 0 times 10 to the t, or approximately 2.3026 times 10 to the t. Now this process actually applies to any exponential function. So that if I have f of x equals a to the x, where a is a constant and my variable x is in the exponent, the derivative of f with respect to x is f prime of 0. In other words, the slope of the tangent line to the function y equals a to the x at 0 times a to the x. So this begs the question, is there an exponential function, a to the x, so that the derivative of the exponential function is itself? In other words, the derivative, sorry, in other words, the slope of the tangent line to a point x, a to the x, the slope of the tangent line is the same as the x value. In other words, that f prime of 0 is equal to 1. And it is the case that there is such a function. The function e to the x, where e is the natural number 2.71828 and so on, is such that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now, let's consider an example where we put all these rules to use. Let's evaluate the derivative with respect to s of 4s squared plus 5 divided by s minus 16 all over 3 times e to the s plus s. The first thing that we note is that we've got a quotient. So we're going to apply the quotient rule and say I'm going to first take the derivative of the numerator. So if I've got the derivative with respect to s of f over g, I need the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator 
times the derivative of the denominator all over the square of the denominator. Then I note that I've got sum and differences in both the numerator and denominator. So I'm going to apply the uh, derivative rules for sum or differences. Then I see that I've got constant multiples, specifically 4, 5, and 3. I also see that I've got 5 times 1 over s, where s can be written as s to the, where 1 over s can be written as s to the negative 1. I also have a constant, the derivative of a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. And next I can use my power rule. So for s squared and s to the negative 1 and s to the 1 power, I can use the power rule, bring the power out in front and subtract 1 from my power. And the last piece that I need to evaluate the derivative is I've got this exponential function, e to the s. The derivative of e to the s is itself e to the s. And simplifying and combining pieces, I get the derivative of my original expression is 8s minus 5 times s to the negative 2 times the quantity 3e to the s plus s minus 4 times s squared plus 5 over s minus 16 times 3 times e to the s plus 1, all divided by 3 e to the s plus s quantity squared. Now, we also can take higher order derivatives. What does that mean? It means if I have a function f and it's differentiable, then its derivative we can also treat as a function of x. So f prime is a function of x. So therefore, I can consider taking its derivative. And I consider the derivative of f prime with respect to x and rewrite that as f double prime of x, which I can say is the second derivative of f. So it's the derivative of the derivative. This process can continue if the subsequent derivatives exist, which mean, or the subsequent limits exist. So we can write the third derivative as f triple prime of x, or third derivative of f with respect to x. The fourth derivative we denote using f with the parentheses of 4, evaluated x, or the fourth derivative of f with respect to x. Or if we've got an nth derivative, we'd say it's the nth derivative of f with respect to x. Suppose we want to evaluate the second derivatives of 10 to the x and x to the 10th, and we notice that these are two very different functions. 10 to the x is an exponential function because the base is a constant and the exponent is a variable. x to the 10th is a power function because the base is a variable and the power is 10 and it's unchanging. Let's first consider the second derivative of 10 to the x. Noting that this is the derivative of the first derivative of 10 to the x. From my previous work, I know that the derivative of 10 to the x is 2.3026 times 10 to the x. That 2.3026 is a constant, so I'm going to use the constant multiple rule and pull that out in front. So now I need to multiply that times the derivative of 10 to the x. So I'm going to, again, take the derivative of the exponential function. And so I have 2.3026 times 2.3026 times 10 to the x, which is simply 2.3026 squared times 10 to the x. If I look at the second derivative of x to the 10th power, I'm going to take the derivative of the derivative of x to the 10th power. So I'm going to use the power rule and say that I'm going to take the derivative of 10 times x to the 9. So I've brought that 10 out in front and I've subtracted 1 from my power. Well that 10 is a coefficient, it's a constant, so I can pull that out in front and use the constant multiple rule. So I've got 10 times the derivative with respect to x of x to the ninth power. Again, I've got, I can apply the power rule. So I've got 10 times 9 times x to the eighth. I brought the 9 out in front and subtracted 1 from my power. So I got, my result is the second derivative of x to the tenth is 90 times x to the eighth. To conclude this video, the last two slides summarize the derivative rules we've discussed thus far. The last slide considers how we take the derivative of functions that are combined with other functions.